Hello, my name is Thomas Aizan, and I'm an Android developer relations engineer working on machine learning and generative AI. Later, we'll hear from Terence Zhang, who is also an Android developer relations engineer and also works on ML and AI. Last December, we launched the Gemini models, the most capable models we've ever built. They were built from the ground up to be multimodal. That means that they can generalize and seamlessly understand different types of information, such as text, code, audio, image, and video. Gemini models come in three sizes. Gemini Nano, which is optimized for mobile. Gemini Pro, a highly performant model for a wide range of tasks. And Gemini Ultra, our most capable model with advanced reasoning capabilities. Gemini Nano is optimized to run on Android. And along with it, we also launched AI Core. It's a new service for the Android operating system. Available for Android 14, AI Core handles model management, runtimes, safety features, and more to run generative AI directly on device. The API for AI Core is currently in private preview. You can visit the Android AI Core documentation to learn more. And we actually have a full session dedicated to Gemini Nano and AI Core. We discuss how AI Core works under the hood and walk you through the work done by the Android team to enable a large language model to run directly on a smartphone. We'll talk about Gemini Pro in more detail in a minute. But keep in mind that it's a very performant model able to support a broad range of tasks with prompt using both text and images. And finally, Gemini Ultra is our most advanced model. With a score of 90%, Gemini Ultra is the first model to outperform human experts on the MMLU benchmark. This benchmark evaluates the model on topics such as math, physics, history, law, medicine, and ethics, and tests for both word knowledge and problem-solving abilities. In parallel, Google also released Gemma. It's a family of open generative AI models using some technologies pioneered by Gemini models. ML researchers and engineers interested in experimenting with LLMs and Android can use the experimental MediaPipe LLM Inference API to run Gemma and other models on Android. However, Gemini Nano and AI Core remain the recommended path to production for on-device generative AI for Android. So we just talked about Gemini models, but what can you build with generative AI on Android? I will pass it to Terence to review use cases this technology can unlock in your app. Thanks, Tuma. Hi, everyone. My name is Terence, and I'm a developer relations engineer working on AI on Android. Let's talk about the interesting use cases for Gen AI on Android. An advantage that smartphones have over other platforms is the access to a really good camera. And photos taken by the device's camera can be used for prompting Gen AI models. Generally speaking, smartphones aren't always ideal to input large amounts of text. The software keyboard is very convenient for short messages and quick replies, but as we all know, it can be a little challenging to write like a long section of text. Some features powered by generative AI can improve the user experience in your application. For example, it can suggest replies to text messages or emails. It can rewrite a text message or an email to change its tone or its style. And it can also be used to generate one or several paragraphs out of just a few bullet points. Similarly, the smaller screen of a smartphone makes reading long texts harder than on a larger screen. So you can use GenAI to help consume textual information by enabling summarization or enabling your users to ask questions about documents. These use cases are already implemented by some Google apps. For example, the Pixel Recorder app uses generative AI to summarize your voice notes. Messages for Android uses GenAI to let you rewrite a text message with a different tone or style. 
you've probably heard about prompt engineering. It's more of an art than a science. I mean, we don't really know exactly what will come out of a model. But by combining simple techniques and using trial and error, you can get the model to return satisfying results. First, be sure to be specific in your instructions. Describe specifically the task that you want the model to perform. In addition, define the style or the format of the response that you're expecting. In this example, we're setting a clear constraint, a three bullet point summary. You can also use a technique called few shot prompting and provide a few examples directly in your prompt. Don't hesitate to experiment with the number of examples. Avoid negative prompting. Telling the model what you don't want in your prompt doesn't always work as well as clearly describing what you do want. When you use an image with your text prompt, make sure to provide the image before the text. Go to the Gemini API documentation to learn more about prompting. With that, let's pass it back to Toma to review steps to integrate Gemini Pro into your Android application. Thanks, Terence. There are two paths to integrate Gemini Pro to your Android app, the Google AI Client SDK or the Vertex AI SDK for Firebase. Let's start with the Google AI Client SDK. There are four main steps to integrate Gemini Pro to your Android app using the Google AI Client SDK. First, prototype your prompt in Google AI Studio. Then, generate your API key. Add the Gradle dependencies to your project. And finally, integrate the Google AI Client SDK to your Kotlin code. Google AI Studio is a browser-based IDE to help you prototype your prompts for generative AI models. You can easily upload images and use them in your prompt or experiment with different variables in templatized prompts. You can follow the recommendations Terence walk us through to design the ideal prompt. Google AI Studio and the Gemini API are available in 181 countries and territories. Once you are satisfied with your prompt, generate your API key directly in Google AI Studio by clicking on Get API Key. And once your Gemini key is set in your project, click on the Get Code button and select Android Kotlin to integrate the Gemini API to your Kotlin code. Add the dependencies to your Gradle imports. And then instantiate a generative model by passing the following arguments. First, the model version. Here we are using Gemini Pro 1.5. Then pass the API key. You may also want to pass the configuration of the model with values such as temperature, top K, top P, which impact the creativity of the model. And you can also define the maximum numbers of tokens returned by the model. And if token doesn't really speak to you, keep in mind that it's about three quarters of a word. Finally, you can optionally configure the safety settings of the response. Now that you instantiated the model, just call generate content and pass your image and prompt to generate a response. The generation is asynchronous, but you'll note that the generate content method is a suspend function. So the integration to your existing Kotlin code should be easy. And that's it. You can now use Gemini Pro in your Android application. And it's actually even easier if you start from scratch. You can use the Android Studio Gemini API starter template in the latest preview of Android Studio to start a new Gemini Pro project and generate your API key directly from Android Studio. And you can also import the generative AI sample directly from Android Studio. Go to the Android Studio documentation to learn more. By default, the model will return a response after completing the entire generation. But to enable faster interactions, 
you don't have to wait for the entire completion. Instead, you can use the generate content stream method to stream the response and start displaying partial results. As we saw, the Google AI Client SDK lets you very easily integrate Gemini Pro to your Android application. And note that this SDK is still in preview, and we don't recommend you to use it in production. Let's not talk about Vertex AI SDK for Firebase. Firebase is a service used and trusted by millions of developers around the world. It provides a broad range of services from application crash monitoring to push notifications. The API is very similar to the Google AI client SDK we just discussed, so the migration should be easy. And thanks to AppCheck, Firebase provides a high-level credential protection. To get started, go to the Firebase documentation. And note that it's also possible to integrate Gemini Pro with your backend via Vertex AI in Google Cloud Platform. If you want to learn more, go to the Google Cloud Vertex AI documentation. Today, we learn how to integrate Gemini Pro to your application. So to summarize, Start by designing your prompts in Google AI Studio. And then add Gemini Pro to your application, either by integrating with Google AI Client SDK or try the new Vertex AI SDK for Firebase. As a reminder, both SDKs are still in preview, and we currently don't recommend using them in production. But stay tuned for updates as we keep working on improving these SDKs. Also, we just launched a Gemini developer competition. So it is the perfect time to build an application integrating the Gemini API. We can't wait to see what you'll build.